first speaker. He's head of the industry engagement in GSI Ireland. I wonder, would you please give a warm welcome to Alan Gormley. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks to Airfield for, for inviting us to, to speak. And a big thank you to the previous speakers who have stolen most of my thunder. But um, I agree with nearly everything except the, the claim from the FSAI that Guinness doesn't give you strength. Um, but we're here now. I'm going to talk about a very niche piece of technology that I think um, is often overlooked but has, has made great changes to, to the food industry in general um, and can empower consumers, I would say. Now, just as a matter of interest, does anyone know who, who GS1 actually is? Okay, I'll have to talk to marketing. Um, <laughs> it, it actually doesn't... <laughs> It actually doesn't really matter that you, the, the, if you know us or not. Think of us as maybe the, the intel inside of, of food packaging. Um, we're the people responsible for barcoding. Now, rather than explain lots about the company, etc., for today, I thought it might be more interesting to tell you about how it came about or how, why we were established. Um, and it was basically a small group of consumers in a supermarket in Pennsylvania, I believe, started complaining about shopping queues and uh, that they had to wait too long. So a gentleman called Joseph Woodward was, was spoken to. Um, he had previously worked on the atomic bomb, believe it or not, and a system for elevator music. But apparently he was drawing lines in the sand on a beach in California and the, the idea came to him. Personally, I believe, call me a cynic, it was probably a couple of geeks in IBM that came up with the formulas. But long story short, the, the barcode was invented. So after that, the retailer associations and supplier associations in the US got together and tried to come up with a universal product code that would go into the barcode, so products could be identified in the supply chain. And those products would have a globally unique identifier. So after seven years of discussions, and only after the technical geeks on those committees were replaced by the CEOs of those companies, was an agreement um, met. And that's because the stakes were, too, were so high. You're, you're, you're talking about changing every single piece of packaging on the planet and also investing billions of dollars of, of scanning equipment. So that sort of, the, the, the two stories came together in a, a supermarket in Troy, Ohio, when a packet of juicy fruit was scanned. Now, if you think about that for a second, a small group of consumers in a super or a town in, in Pennsylvania, changed all of the packaging um, on all of the products in globally. It's 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 a significant thought, I think. Now, we live in a, a much different world today, but one of the and and, and Marie actually talked about it um, as well. And it's really about the, the, the data associated with products. Um, consumers are entitled now to have the same information available to them on a package as um, on, online as well. And this poses a lot of challenges for, for, for companies, rightly so, driven by consumer demands and regulatory demands. But the companies who are doing it best um, are those who've increased their transparency, increased speed, the speed in which they do it, and increased trust with their supply chain partners and with consumers, more importantly. Technology can help this in a few different ways, Identif by identification, what we've been doing for 40 years, 
by having good quality data made available to consumers, and by capturing events about products as they move through a supply chain. So just the identification piece, a small piece of technology, new technology, that's going to help, um, I think, consumers make better decisions is this thing here. It looks kind of like a regular barcode, but it's called a data bar. The difference between it and the barcodes that you're used to seeing and scanning every day is that you can encode things like expiry numbers or dates, batch numbers, best before dates in it. So if there's a recall, a retailer can not sell you that product because it's been recalled, quite simply. If a product is about to expire, you can have an app through your loyalty scheme and it'll tell you, hey, there's a few bits and pieces in the fridge that you need to use. It's a small thing, but it, it can help. Data, so data is something that is obviously critically important to the consumer to, to make an informed decision on what they, what they buy and when they buy it. GS1, about eight months ago, um, launched a thing called the GS1 Cloud. And I'm very pleased to say, at the moment, there's 80 million products up there that consumers, regulators, app developers who want to maybe add value to that data, so allergen information, et cetera, can access. But more, most importantly, I suppose, it's the consumer who can access this data. The last one I'll mention is, or the last technology I'll mention that is enabled by that small little black and white um, mark on your packaging is around events and interoperability. Traditionally, traceability, uh, driven by regulators in Europe, has been sort of a one-up, one-down requirement. So me as a supplier or a manufacturer, I have to know where the goods came from and where I'm sending it to, and that's all. And that's fine if everyone plays their part in the supply chain, but if one person along the chain doesn't play their, their role, the consumer doesn't get that final piece of information or all of the information before it. And that's very important. Um, when you consider scares in the food industry, in the farm industry, etc. So technology, I think, has evolved to sort of mitigate some of those risks. And you would have heard of IoT, Internet of Things technology, and, and things like that. And one of those that we're currently working with a lot, a lot of Irish suppliers on, on, on rolling out is called F-Trace. And essentially, instead of passing data along the chain, you're storing data in a cloud. And as each person in the supply chain touches the food, catches the food, um, processes the food, maybe smokes the food, that's entered into this cloud of information. And the consumer can then scan the barcode, get all of the information about that product, whether it was sourced sustainably, how the fish was caught, et cetera, et cetera, um, and make a decision on whether or not to purchase it. So I'll leave you with well, a question and a quote, a quote, one of Margaret Mead's, or one of my favorite Margaret Mead's quotes, is that um, don't, don't doubt that a, a small number of people um, can change the world, because it's the only thing that ever has. And also, just for you to ask the question of your retailers and the people who, who, who you purchase goods from, how they're being transparent, how they're going to get your trust, and how quickly are they going to do it. Thank you. Thank you.